Welcome back to our center talk. Today we're going to be showing you how to take all of this and put it into this. So welcome back. As you can see, we're going to be taking a look at the Matterhorn Gotter Fun DEH44 today. Um, and this is from BMO. Comes in a lovely box. Um, and this is what using the push pull trains between Andamath and Goshenin, which is quite nice. We're going to be having a look at this wagon, which we're going to install some of these Woodland Scenic figures. I'm going to be having a look at this gra gravel wagon. We're also going to be installing this lovely lock pilot digital decoder from ESU into the into the main train, and then we'll have a look at how that actually works on our Z21 digital system. How exciting! Let's get started. A couple of tools you'll need. Um, more than likely, you're going to need a um, Phillips small Phillips screwdriver like this one here, um, and probably advisable for magnetic parts tray, which we'll just put aside there. Um, I always like a bit of blue tack. Always useful to have some blue tack. Um, and I also think that. Um, a touch of poly cement plastic glue for plastic model model making is is also going to be quite good. So first, let's have a look at the locomotive. Um, on the box, you can see it's the FO1, um, which was one of the merger companies of the Matterhorn Gotthard Barn before it was uh, properly founded in 2003. Um, but one of the first things that you'll see on here. Um, is that it is HOM scale item. Um, so, as you can see in the lovely box, we've got the locomotive, um, some bag of little tiny bits which will um, stick on the, the locomotive in just a moment. Um, we've also got some instructions. One is a parts list, um, and the other is sort of a reference instruction book that on what goes where. That'll be quite useful um, in a second and the parts list is very boring just in case you break parts or lose parts etc. But the HOM is still in 1 to 87 scale. The difference just lies in the, the track. So this is essentially TT gauge track which I believe is around 12 millimeters um, and the locomotive is specially designed to fit on this track. Um, but there's, there, there is the locomotive. Um, and just for a bit of size comparison, of course, off, off set, I've got the, uh, the BLS one. Um, and you can see that there is a substantial size difference between the two. Um, not only in the rails, which are both Pico set track, um, but in the locomotives themselves. So this comes from Zermatt um, and the line runs from Zermatt to Decentis with a spur off to Goshenen with the Goshenen tunnel. Um, and this one's just a mainline locomotive from BLS who, who run also in Switzerland. Now that we've got this though, I think it's high time that we should start um, sticking on some of these. Um, and decoder installation. So let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this uh, Lock Pilot 6-pin DCC decoder, which um, probably is an N-gauge item um, because it's just so small. Um, I've turned the locomotive upside down, which will just help us access it on you to see. But while we're here, one of the noteworthy things about this is um, we've got these cog wheels here which are used on the real thing to climb up steep gradients of up to um, 181 per meal, which is equivalent to 18% gradient. This can also be used in the model form. Unfortunately, I don't have the track. Um, it's quite costly. I think around 21 euros per um, flexible meter length, um, which is very expensive. But today we're just going to be installing the decoder and have a look at that. I believe you can get from ESU um, the lock sound one, um, which has the, the realistic sounds for, 
of this. Um, I think it's known as the FO on their website, but they're identical locomotives. Offside, I've just got the uh, magnetic parts tray, um, and there are, as you can see, four Phillips screws, which are just going to be removed on the very. Oh, they're stuck in the thing, so they might as well stay in there. Um, and there's four of them, which if we just remove, um, we will be able to gain access to the inside of the locomotive. Um, so the shell comes off just like that. And now that we're inside, it's a good idea to use the reference manual. There's German on one side, far more information in German, such as um, minimum radius and maximum gradient. Um, but for us who speak um, English, we've got a bit of information um, which we will use. Um, and I've worked out that the decoder, which we're going to retrofit, needs to be put here. So let's get um, our trusty craft knife and um, we can open this. Oh yes, now we're in business. Um, and as you can see, the decoder nicely comes out of the, uh, the ESU box. Got a bit of instructions here. It's advisable to have a good look at them because, um, as I found here, there are actually three wires that hook off, um, and they are for optional accessories. I believe it's like a, a uh, two-function decoder, but that's not required for this this specific model. So we'll just gently lift up the board and remove it, there we go, and we will install the lovely little I will grab a twist tie and put that on there and uh, neaten up the cabling. That feels uh, slightly better, that it's not going to get damaged as I put the roof on. Um, and another nice thing you can do is, um, I've got a, re a really good locomotive driver here, Look, looking really, really quite dapper here. Um, and as we can uh, see from that, that blue tack, which you all claimed I was daft from collecting, um, can be used just to uh, have a really permanent fix of of the figure <laughs> so we'll, we'll just put that there um, and that, now it looks so much more realistic you can actually believe that this is a locomotive um, we'll now move our attention to the um, body here um, and as of course you've seen what I've talked about we've got some of those fantastic miniature accessories so what we've got here is we've got some of the pneumatic brake hoses which run between the coach and the locomotive. We've got some uh, handlebars or handles, whatever you want to call them, that just go in the body. Um, we've got some sort of couplings which you can refit um, if you're not planning on having anything connected to one end. Um, and there is a, a nice sort of gangway on one side which probably is direction you're supposed to put it in um, but there's also things like uh, emergency stop things um, and that sort of thing and there's also some what's they called wing mirrors because Swiss trains have them so figure on the side there so let's install them I think I might do this in a bit of time lapse as um, you can see everything you need on this sheet of paper here
well I've uh, mentally confounded myself um, and found it very difficult to put the things in. Um, but at least it's got some very exciting handrails. <laughs> um, weren't able to put the handrails in there. Um, and the, these were very difficult to fit. So I'm at least pleased I got some of them on. And, and it certainly looks slightly more realistic um, than it did. I'm just going to reassemble this um, and decide which way I want the front to be. I think the, you know, that driver shouldn't be what the other camera is. So I'll just reassemble this. Okay, we can uh, put that on the track and claim that that's um, sorted, which it probably is. Now we'll move on to having a look at the coach. The coach hopefully will be slightly easier than uh, oh, I've done a terrible job opening that there. Um, and you can see that here have the lovely coach with its windows. Oh no, not more scenic items. We'll deal with that in a moment. But as we can see on here, we've got this, we've got a step assembly, um, which it, yeah, which is, um, which is designed for different radiuses. So we've got one is for my brilliant German translation skills. We've got from 280 to 350 millimeter radius of track, and we've also got anything bigger than 350 millimeters. Um, there are different steps, um, and once indicated by M, we use these plus the actual steps from in there. So there's the instructions. I haven't been doing a very good job of keeping track where the camera is. Um, but we'll fit them just as shown there. What we'll also do is we'll pop the wagon open and we'll insert some figures. So let me just chuck some very sharp implements off the side of uh, this wonderful studio. Um, to open this, it's really simple. We're just going to sort of gently pry apart the two halves. And you can see we've got the chassis or the undercarriage there. The windows, which uh, at first I thought, oh dear, one of them's fallen off, but no, they are. Uh, I suppose it's designed for summer with them open. Um, we've got the seating and we've got the other side as well as that. Hopefully, that makes it slightly easier than the locomotive. So, what we'll be doing here. Um, is again favourite item blue tech the uh, one thing oh dear the figures have gone everywhere got some fairly exciting I suppose figures uh, let's have have some of the seated ones oh yeah we've got a sort of Mick Jagger here which we will um, trustily blue tech just worth the worth we want. Let's make sure he doesn't get stuck to the, to the window. So carriage reassembly is um, just as simple as assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the carriage in Put the window in. It's just a like a, sort of something to push, put it down. Okay. Um, and some by some miracle, we managed to get one of the people near the window, um, and that looks slightly nicer now that it's got some people in. We'll just Gently push this down. There we go. We're, we're almost there. Clearly, I need to re glue this, which uh, is going to be very fun. 
There we go. Um, and we'll just <laughs> leave that to dry. Um, it's really authentic though. We'll just clear this up and then we'll have a go at running it on the track, which will be very exciting. So welcome to the uh, small amount of test track that we have set up ready for the uh, locomotive here. Um, and in order to get this locomotive running, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Z21CD programming app or part of the app on the Z21 for CV programming. So I've got the app open here, this is the latest version, slightly easier to use than some of the previous ones. So we're going to CV programming. I've got this test piece of track here set up so that I can use it as the programming track. So we'll go on to program track. And we can see at the top it's got the CV address as one, and that's what you use to change locomotive addresses. If we click read CV, you can see it comes back with the result of three, which means the locomotive address is three. If we want to change it to, for example, 91, like the, uh, the number of the locomotive, you can just click set CV. And you now know that that locomotive address is set to position 91. Now if we go on to um, vehicles, we can create a new vehicle. We'll call it the locomotive. We need to put the data in. The locomotive address is 91. The name of this locomotive is D E H four four. And now that we've got that, we can um, just change the locomotive image from the camera. Um, oh yeah, snazzy photo there. We'll just use that photo. And um, now, if we go into functions, we can set a function as. Um, Symbol, we'll put the light and we can put the function to zero. We can then test it. Uh, I like to just see that it's working. Now that we've got that, we can um, go into steering, find the locomotive, and we can turn the lights on. And that's going in the opposite direction. Now you can see we've successfully configured the locomotive, which is good. Um, which, is, which means you can now use it. Let's go to some interesting shots of this train going around my rather small test track.
is um, the Matterhorn Gotthard Barn, DEH44 from BMO. I, I think it's a rather nice model um, and look forward to having it on the island. See you soon.